I may have to pull this off camera slightly so I make sure I'm butted up against the guard portion but that's how she's going to sit and then I'm going to get the clamps on so I'll be back with you here in a second okay everyone here you can see the uh, scale is securely attached so now all I have to do is let it dry for about 24 hours and then I'll come in and uh, drill the holes and possibly trim it up a little bit I'm not too worried about that at the moment my biggest concern right now is to get the uh, pinholes drilled the scale set and then the pin set and then I can always trim at the very last so that's really not an issue just want to make sure everything is securely attached at this time okay everyone it's about 24 hours later I'm gonna go ahead and get our knife our project here unclamped and um, as you can see we're ready to go next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and fill these two holes here with epoxy so uh, let me get set up I'll be right back with you okay everyone as you can see I have uh, two equal amounts of epoxy in this little uh, disposable tray I'm gonna go ahead and get this mixed up nice thing about this T88 epoxy uh, it actually turns a all pearl white milky white in color when you have it mixed thoroughly so that's a good indicator that you are uh, mixing and uh, dispersing in the appropriate amounts so there we have it it's good to go now we're going to get our knife blade here and again please forgive my lighting I'm working in my office at my desk so The inside of these holes have been previously sanded. I'm going to drill three of them here, here, and here. I've already measured the distance between the guard and the center of the first hole. So I know where I have to line up for the uh, last hole here in this section. everything goes well this thing should be done here shortly um, I'm going to end up using some olive oil more than likely on this due to the fact that I'm not sure if the owner is going to use it for cooking or not um, you know right now I'm not too worried about epoxy getting in the holes I drilled as long as they're not filled it's not going to be an issue if a little epoxy gets in there no big deal because once it cures out and I go to the drilling process again I'll just drill it clean through and it'll clean up my holes so I don't have anything to worry about as far as that goes um, 
And as you can see, I'm pretty liberal with the uh, the epoxy, the adhesive. Uh, the majority, or a lot of it, gets squeezed out as you're clamping it down. But, you know, again, no worries. The uh, material knows how much it needs to secure itself. You don't want to have voids or anything of that nature in there. So just do your best. Um, apply enough. Don't over apply it. There's no sense because you're just going to waste it. It'll just get pushed out and then it just becomes a waste. And as you can see with the two-part epoxy, the very little bit I did mix of the hardener and the resin, I still have no oh, half or so remaining on my little mixing tray here. But the thing is also you want to mix enough that you don't fall short. With this one it's not such a big deal because it's 24 hour. This thing doesn't even really get tacky. Start to tack up for 30-40 minutes then it gets a little tacky and you know it, it starts to set within an hour or two, but set the scale on. I'm going to line everything up and then get my clamps in place. I'll probably do this off camera or add to the viewer here just so I can make sure everything's aligned. Issues later down the road. So now that I have the first clamp in place, I pretty much can just bring this one in and clamp it on. There's not going to be any movement now. I'll re-verify it as I clamp everything down. One more. You know, these three clamps aren't necessary. Probably got could have gotten by with just the one. But I have them. So why not utilize it? Suddenly becomes, uh, you know, not usable. But as you can see, there's quite a bit of material that I'm going to have to remove here and here. But uh, what I'm going to do first is go ahead and get back out to the garage and get these three holes drilled all the way through so we can uh, get ready to install our pins. And uh, the nice thing about how I'm doing it now is, again, we're going to have another wait time for the curing process of the pin. But, you know, again, it gives you time to work the other material and not be in so much of a rush and then make a mistake especially at this point it's such a pain to go back in and try to pry off the uh, scales and then clean it up again and you know just go through the whole process so if you take your time do it right um, should be a one-time deal and have a finished product so uh, have it. Three holes bored, ready for pins. Actually give you a little better view. And basically this is how the trimming is going to take place. So I'll just show you a little bit of it and then uh, turn off the camera and get this part done.
I mean, there's no sense in you watching me cut, you know, a piece of wood off a, off a knife. There's really no educational value to it, um, other than the fact that you don't want to cut into your spine of your knife. But using a coping saw, you can actually angle the blade, so you shouldn't have that, you know, happen. And then it runs fairly smooth along the back as well. So yeah, it should feels really rough cut right now. They're pretty close. I can go ahead and get the uh, final work done on the uh, belt sander. But there you have it. Three pins installed. I'm going to let those cure up and uh, it'll be ready for the belt sander. So stay tuned. Um, how they're looking. Try to give you different angles. The liner. Um, the hand fitting up here. Polish it out, buff it out. That's where we're at. I'm going to continue on with the hand filing back in this area here.